Hello everyone, this is Amir from Audio Science Review. I just posted the uh, review of the uh, Hi-Fi Man uh, Ananda uh, headphone. And I thought as a contrast, I also posted a review of the uh, uh, Mass Drop or Drop uh, Focal Elex or Elex or Elex, however it's pronounced uh, on this thing. And because there are very different headphones, uh, on this thing. This is supposed to be a, a close uh, cousin of the Focal Clear. And uh, I'll show you actually the uh, yeah, some comparisons between the two. Uh, it's a $700 headphone um, and you buy it from drop.com or massdrop.com, even though it's made by Focal. And I'm told uh, that you can't buy it in Europe. I guess Focal uh, forced drop to only distribute it in the US uh, on this. So. Um, I went ahead and measured it. I uh, found that it was quite easy to measure on my fixture, that the uh, channel to channel consistency was quite good. And so was the result in, in low and high frequencies. And you can see that in here. You can see how beautiful the two channels are. They match each other almost perfectly. And uh, we more or less follow our preference curve between 100 hertz and about three kilohertz. Below 100 hertz, we have this drooping response. And uh, it's certainly not flat, and it's certainly not what uh, you know. Latest research in preference tells us that you know you want to achieve this this blue curve. Uh, there's a bit of excess energy in here, but I find that the accuracy is not quite that high in the preference curve in here. A um, little bit of wiggleness, which I'll cover, and then there's a short fall right in here uh, on this. Otherwise. You know, the peaks more or less line up with our preference. Uh, in high frequencies, there are a lot of reflections inside the cuff and cause these dips and, and uh, peaks in here. So you want to look at the envelope, uh, the peaks of these things rather than the ups and downs in here. These things are not material. So for grins, I went out there and went ahead and, and pulled up the uh, measurements I did of the Focal Clear. And boy, they look identical. Yes, there's some channel-to-channel -channel variation, but that could have been that the pads had worn differently on, on the clear that I tested. And you can see even the wiggliness in here matches the wiggliness in here. The curve, it's just as identical as it gets, you know, relative to, you know, headphone measurements on, on this thing. So uh, that tells me that basically they are close cousins of each other. Um, that's basically a tonality it should be identical between the two. Uh, even for for Cal Utopia has a very similar uh, signature in here. If you look at these two, for example, very little is different up to here. In high frequencies, though, there is some difference between the two. So you know maybe the tonality changes in in treble area, but up to treble. Uh, looks similar, and that tells me that Focal has some in standard uh, internally, some frequency response curve that they're trying to follow, and, and they think this is the right one. In my opinion, this is not correct in, in bass response. Um, so that's the same thing, uh, showing the frequency response relative to our preference, and basically shows that we, we need a lot more bass than we have. Um, Group delay, uh, as I've explained before, you want to have an exponential drop off to zero in here. Uh, any kind of wiggliness and messiness tends to uh, suggest that there are multiple sources of sound that are interfering with each other. And uh, we tend to get them in, in this region a lot more with some headphones than others. Uh, these uh, Focals have a angle driver, uh, you're not going to be able to see them in, in, in here, and uh, that may couple to your ear in a special way that causes this kind of wiggliness. Uh, one of the members on the forum is suggesting that the nice spatial effects you get where sound is opened or layered comes maybe be, uh, because of, the, you know, oh, let me put it this way, that we see the indication of it through this messiness. So this messiness may actually be a good thing. So I've been noting that and we'll see where it goes. As usual, whenever you see these massive peaks and valleys in here, the, the sharp ticks, you do not want to EQ that. That tells you that there's definitely cancellation or additions happening. So don't touch that area with any kind of equalization. Um, when I tested the Focal Clear, I found that as soon as I turn up the volume, especially with my equalization, it all of a sudden would make the nastiest crackling sound that you, you make sure think that you just blew the headphone or your, your eardrops or both uh, on this thing. And uh, this time, I, and there were a lot of debates as to whether it does it or not. Um, this time, when I was running the sweeps on, on Elex, um, I noticed that actually at 114 dB SPL, it was crackling all the way as it was sweeping 
uh, I don't know if it's all the way, but I could hear it crackling. As this thing was mounted on a fixture, I could hear it from the outside. So for sure, this headphone, just like Clear, can handle loudness below above certain level. Now you might think, well, you know, 114 dB is quite loud. Um, that's never going to happen. It actually in bass, 114 dB is not very loud. I'll do a video on it uh, in the future. Um, and indeed, on real music without a lot of bass, uh, female vocals, for example, with my equalization, as I turn up the volume, all of a sudden I would hear the crackling sound. So very ungraceful uh, on that front. Um, and you can see that the clear had the same problem here. So both of these headphones are, are good. But above that, and especially if you stay at the 94 and 104 dB SBL, which is these two graphs at the bottom, look at how low the distortion is. It basically hugs the zero line. Uh, extremely low distortion. Uh, I mean, there's just nothing to speak of. Even, even at 114, where it's crackling at low frequencies, at high frequencies, is ex extremely clean. I just posted a review of Hi-Fi Man and Anda, and so many people claim it's just the best thing they've heard, but let's do a quick comparison of distortion there. Look at what it produces in here. There's just no way one can make a case that this Ananda, Haifa Man Ananda is producing clean sound. It's just not even in the same planet. We have like 4% distortion uh, at the highest level uh, in here, in, in the most sensitive region of our hearing, which is one to two kilohertz and another one over here. So going back to Elex again, uh, you can see there's just, I mean, there's just none of it there. So very, very, very clean. and. And that's just a nice thing to have. And same with clear. Clear was also very clean. Uh, there are some variations in low frequency, by the way, due to fit and stuff like that. So don't micro analyze this thing. Just look at the trends, which in this case just says as frequencies go up, this is one clean driver. Um, at 94 dB, I showed that it's just really just everything below 200 is just a little bit above my threshold. But above that, you can see actually a nice gap develops in here where we have this distortions down here and the signals way up here. So very, very clean headphone. Um, the impedance of this headphone is very variable at one kilohertz is only 80, 81 ohms, but in low frequencies, it jumps all the way up to 290 ohms. And because of that 290 ohms, you need to have a lot of voltage to drive this, not, not current, low impedance. Uh, um, headphones need current and a uh, um, lot of uh, phones, for example, don't produce a lot of voltage. And so they may have some difficulty driving this. Fortunately, it's a very sensitive headphone. Uh, you can see it's 180 millivolts it takes to produce 94 dB. And that's, uh, you know, about 40, 50% less than Sennheiser HD 650, which requires 288 millivolts. So as, as sensitivity goes, efficiency goes, it's in the middle to, you know, better than middle uh, on this, so, which is an advantage. You know, you could wind up with headphones up here where you just absolutely need dedicated desktop amplifiers to drive them well. Uh, you don't need that with, with this, although it's not way down here either. On uh, listening test, um, it, it's good news, bad news. A lot of headphones that have bad frequency response, I can't even listen to them without equalization. In this case, there was no glaring fault with the sound. I just found that it wasn't exciting. I mean, you're in this hobby to get exciting sound when you play a reference track. You want to just put give you goosebumps, and it didn't give me goosebumps. So, but just a couple of filters. One over here, you know, in filling in that hole around uh, four kilohertz and anything in this region when you raise it up actually opens up the sound and make the spatial qualities better and so i'm always happy when i can boost that up and especially when it's a low distortion headphone meaning when i do this the distortion doesn't increase to counteract that and then i dialed in some amount of uh sub bass uh enhancement and bass enhancement this is just done by eye both of these are done by eye by the way i don't use any kind of computer program to spit them out and i then do listening tests. I do A-B tests and sometimes blind A-B tests where I turn these bands on and off individually and make sure that the effect is A, noticeable and, and B, uh, um, add to the experience. And across all the tracks that I tested, this boost makes an amazing difference because it's, this headphone is so low distortion, it's able to take a lot of equalization without any side effects. And um, Once I had these two together, it was just extremely nice sounding headphone. Uh, it's not like HD800S and others that have these massive spatial effects, but it's got enough of that magic in there to make you feel good about it. And then uh, tonality is nice. Now, 
usually when a headphone just takes a couple of filters like this, I would give it the, my highest, you know, uh, award, which is the golfing Panther or the, in case of European stuff, uh, the uh, soccer player Panther. Uh, in here, I, I just couldn't do that again because I literally was afraid of turning up the volume lest it start to crackle in my ear. I mean, this is not minor, you know, where the sound gets a little distortion. All of a sudden, it sounds like somebody's taking like a piece of mylar and crackling it. Uh, luckily, it's not that, and the driver seems quite robust. Uh, but uh, but it's it's quite annoying. Uh, I mean, again, I could hear it even on female vocals. Once I boosted the bass this much to get proper sub bass, then it happens a lot more. Uh, was the volume high? Yeah, relatively speaking. But I'm the kind of person when once in a while there's good music and I say, wow, that sounds good. I want to crank it up for just a you know, minute or two listening to that and then turn it back down. So it's not a case where I sit there constantly and listen at, at high volume. And I don't want any limitations in the device that I'm using, especially since their competitors don't have these limitations. So in this case, seems like Focal's made a trade-off in that they made an extremely low distortion uh, driver, but but it can't go past certain amount of um, uh, excursion. Uh, you just push it just a hair, and it just something flexes or something bad happens in that driver where distortion just shoots up through the roof and and the thing starts to crackle. So if you can stay below that limit, then it's an extremely good headphone and seven hundred dollars is a cheap way to get into this headphone versus paying more for the uh, true uh, clear brand. That said, uh, later on in the forum discussion, a number of people post that these headphones reliability has been quite poor, where after a certain amount of time, year or so, or sometimes a month after they get it, one channel cuts out and the drivers literally goes bad and your only warranty is through drop.com. And they only provide that warranty through their, uh, you know, one-year warranty. I think they provide. They've been good apparently in extending that a little bit for people. But uh, people have posted that this is a common problem with these things, and it's a shame if that's the case. Um, for sure, if you get it, use it a lot during the warranty period to make sure that doesn't happen. Um, so, but if you're worried about that, uh, if the clear version of it is better, then go ahead and get the clear version, and you'll see that my equalization is similar for both of them, and and it should do the th same thing again. The crackling will be there just the same, um, but at least this reliability issue will not be there. Uh, sort of makes sense that maybe for Cal found it way to use cheaper drivers that maybe they're not tested for as long for you know uh infant mortality or some other issue that's something that they do in Benham or yeah for their own brand but when they sell it under the drop name uh some corners may have been taken i don't know i just thought i'd give you <clears throat> that warning if that bothers you then uh there are plenty of other headphones to go pick uh Go to audiosciencereview.com and, and look at all the headphone drivers and you'll find a lot of other choices. Okay, that's it. See you in a future video. Bye-bye.